previously in the input movement where we aligned the camera to a sphere that moved around and basically went in a certain direction, we didn't actually use any physics. So in this regard, we're going to start using physics action impulse nodes to begin by just creating a simple jump. And then we're going to test to see what the actual height of the jump is. And then that way, when we go into it, we cannot double jump or triple jump because you don't want them to infinitely jump in a game. But you may want them to jump at a certain velocity or height in general. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Create Object. We'll go ahead and we'll get an entity, which is going to be a physics rigid body extended entity. With this, we're going to go down and we will uncheck resting and we'll make the mass to something like 50 kg. To test it and make sure it works, we're going to drag it up and press play and we can see immediately that this thing is definitely rolling on the ground. So let's bring it back down. I'm going to right click and create a flow graph and we'll call this one jump underscore FG. So with flow graph open, I'm going to go to my entities. If you don't have flow graph docked, you can go up to tools, flow graph, and that's where it will be. So this becomes quite an interesting thing. We first want to say use an input key, and specifically for jump, we usually use a space bar. So I'm going to go ahead and press Q, and then I'm going to type in input, and then I'm going to press enter, and this is pretty much going to give me my key. And inside of the key, I want to type in space. So now I've said, yep, when this is pressed, I want to be able to jump upward. Well, I need to go in here and I need to take my ball, which we can name sphere underscore con for controller. And let's go ahead and go to entity, and we want to choose the entity ID. And then we're going to right click and assign the selected entity. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'm going to drop down to the physics section. And we want to grab an action impulse. So at first, we want to put the ID of the sphere into it. And then we pretty much want to, on press, activate it. So since we're going up in the Z, we're going to want to go up on the impulse in the Z. Now let's go ahead and make this something like 200. I'm not sure what it'll do at first, so we'll just have to experiment and see. So if we come in and we press play, and I press the space bar, we can see that we're now jumping up and down. Let's go ahead and uh, jump up a little bit higher, because we're not going too high. So we can increase this to something like 1,000, which should give us a very, very high jump. So now it's gone up in the air, but what happens if I were to press again? You would see that it's just going to go up and up and up. And that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the sphere itself. This is where we have to kind of check to see exactly what it's doing and what the range of the velocity is. So I'm going to close this up just a little bit so we have more room to work. Now what I want to do is I want to query the actual velocity of this object. So in order to do that, I need to go into the dynamics. And I need to check this entity. So we're going to run it back in here because we're using the same exact thing. And move this back over here. And we said that we wanted to check it for the velocity, which V right here on the output is the actual velocity. But in order to do that in the past, we've gone and gotten a math in range node. So if we go to math and we go to in range, we can actually check a value. And this is very important because we want to be able to check the velocity. So to get the velocity, we want to take the vector from the velocity out and extract all three of those values. So we'll go ahead and bring this down. We'll go to VEC3. And what we'll do is drag in a from a VEC3. And we can already see that this right here is going to split out this vector into the x, y, and z values, which is exactly what we want, because we want to test a couple of them. So let's go ahead and test the Z because that's all we were triggering before. 
and we know that we want to enable and disable from true and false. So let's go ahead and check the velocity and check if it's in range at all. So we could check the something like 0.5 and then we can do a negative value of negative 0.5. So in this regard, we've been able to check the velocity and see what exactly the ball is doing. And let's see if it inhibits us at all regarding our jump. So if I press play now, I can't actually jump. So it's limiting me to being able to jump only in that small amount. So this is good. It's actually caused us to be able to jump and be limited in that sense. Let's go ahead and create a simple comment box. We'll call this one jump limit. We'll make it white as I usually do. And expand it. So just to quickly recap, we are putting an action impulse in the Z. You can change it to whatever you want through the input key of space, but in order to do so, we're checking the velocity through the physics dynamics node to see if the vector of the Z value is within the range of negative 0.5 to 0.5. So we're just making sure it's on the floor and maybe it's high enough at 0.5 because in reality, you're going to increase past that velocity value if you're falling or you're jumping up really quickly. So we're basically saying if it's pretty much still or stationary, we're able to jump. And that's all it is in regards to the jump limiting. And then we'll progress on in the next video to figure out how we can move back and forth to have a truly rolling sphere around.